Okay. Hi, that was fun. All right, just to show you a few samples of the things you can do with the um, kit number four, um, which is now ready uh, at the Cyrus Public Library STEM Club. And I know it's, uh, the, uh, you're not supposed to have a favorite, but the bug bot is my favorite. You could look at that cute little color. Anyway, so those were a lot of fun. All right, I know that that's the fun part, and, and but that's not what the kit's all about. Uh, what it's really about is uh, simple machines um, and engineering principles, because uh, the simple machines allows you to engineer things to decide to to design how you want your vehicle to go now i can give you a motor i can give you wheels and axles and propellers batteries and battery packs which is what i am going to give you in this kit but i can't design the car for you i can't decide how you want it to run this is something you need to do but you can you're going to work with the simple machines and that way you're going to uh figure out how to design these yourself so we're going to get you some information on that okay simple machines you're going to get a little piece of information that goes in your package and explain about that um, there's a lever the lever kind of works like a teeter-totter um, or a shovel and then you have a wheel and an axle and then we'll just get, get in the kit here and you're going to so that you get this wheels and you put a bar and connect it to a bar in between and that becomes a wheel and axle now many different uses for that obviously for a car you can use sticks the lids off of, of plastic lids off of different bottles that um, you would normally throw away. You can do all kinds of things with wheel and axle. Okay, so another one is a pulley. So you know how you can pull a bucket of water out of a whale. And what it has is a pole that you wrap the rope around. That's the pulley system. And out here you have this wheel that you turn. And this all does work for you. What it actually does as a simple machine, it magnifies the amount of force that you put in. So I put so much force a little bit of force into turning the wheel and yet it lifts with more force in pulling the bucket out of the water otherwise it's it's harder to pull it up by yourself so it magnifies the force that you put in um, so that th these some of the machines do more work for you um, and so when you have a compound machine which is where you use a wheel and an axle and a pulley um, like you would for bringing a bucket out of a well um, that you're, you're, you're magnifying it twice. Once the wheel is doing more, wheel and axle is doing more work for me and the pulley system is doing more work for me. Um, you'll have that in a bicycle. They have uh, several different simple machines that put together help the bicycle work. Um, so other things you have is an inclined plane, which basically, you know, it's a hill, um, a wedge, uh, which you could split logs with. And, um, the screw and the screw does work for you because when you turn this and it's pulling something towards you or pulling it towards something else um so it it works for you so these these are different things that you can utilize that help you understand how to design a new machine um like a car bot so you're going to get a motor Okay, and I'm going to show you this motor. I'm going to get a little better view of it. So what I want you to really see here is the these little copper things here. Okay, those are the contacts that you're going to put the wire through. All right, and then this here is the shaft. Okay, and this is the thing that'll turn once you put battery contacts or wires from the battery pack um, onto the contacts. So how do you do that? get your battery pack so you're going to get various sizes of battery packs there's there's a single battery pack a double battery pack a triple and a quadruple and one of the things that um, <coughs> we started working about 
positive and negative poles and making a um, a closed circuit and, and things of that nature. But what, some of the things that we didn't talk about is voltage. Now you're going to get some AA batteries, which I'm sure you've used in many different things before. A AA battery is 1.5 volt. Okay. So a single battery pack with its leads is going to supply 1.5 volts. But the way these are designed, so they're in a series. Okay. If I put, oops, sorry, two double A's in this, I'm going to get three volts and it adds up. So each one of these, so that you're going to get a six volt out of a four. All right. You're also going to get the, um, the cap connector for a nine volt, which is of course a nine volt battery. It's it supplies nine volts. Now, what you need to be aware of when you purchase a motor, or you get a motor, you need to know what the rating is for it because it takes different volts. All right. This one um, is capable of doing 3 volt to 12 volt. Okay. So I can use the, the double battery pole, um, pack and it actually is recommended for this to use 3 volts. It's going to make the, the motor's going to work for the longest and best at 3 volt. Okay. I can actually use the 1.5 volt. It's just not going to be as efficient. If the, the, the motor is going to run slower. Now, that was helpful. Where's my box? Okay. So what you'll find is that I kind of utilized this. The 9 volts is going to make it go really, really fast. The motor. So I used the single one on here because on the bug bot, we used an eraser, okay, to create this vibration so it would jump around, okay, and it's off sided, all right. So if you can see, whoops, there we go. If you can see, it's just one of those old pink erasers. You have one laying around the house. Here, let me get the eyeballs out of the way, okay. And we've attached it to the shaft. When we had a double battery on this, a double battery pack at three volt. That thing went so fast it just <laughs> it flew the eraser off too quickly and we didn't enjoy the bug bot as much. And these are engineering things that you'll learn as you design something you try something out. Um, you may decide you need to change things up a bit. Well this might be better. What we also realized is that when we were building this one, the one with the fan that basically uses the air currents to pull it along. Oops, and I threw the battery out. I forgot. I had it loose otherwise. Okay. So the reason we have two wings on this is because the fan kept hitting the floor and then it would go, it just stopped on the floor. Okay. So we needed to raise it up, put a couple of more pop popsicle sticks underneath it. And it was like, Hey, why don't we just make them wings? And then we decorated them with stuff. Um, so you're going to try something out and you're going to say, okay, this doesn't work. I need to raise it up. Um, this doesn't work because it's, it's, it's too fast and it throws it off. So we changed out the so so power supply. We put the smaller solar power supply on the one with the bug bot and we, and we switched and put the double on this one, which made it, um, a little more powerful to pull this along. Okay. And I put a nine volt. On this one, which is using a rubber band as a pulley, it's from the, we take it from the, the shaft over to the, the axle underneath. So I've, I've split the axle underneath so that we can get the rubber band through. I use a nine volt and so it's really powerful um, because it has a little more weight to this and it's a little more, um, yeah, I threw this together with some cardboard uh, I had running around. But you can try different things and then, and, and rubber bands, you know, this is all going to do it. Um, the nine volt is, is actually going to, you know, you're going to burn the motor up fa faster with that, obviously. Um, I had a triple on this one where we were also using a rubber band. I need to take one out. Um, so we were also using the rubber band on this. Okay. And, and I didn't have it on there originally, but try to figure out how to keep the rubber band from coming off of the shaft. I'm using um, a, a fusible bead, which I've hot glued to the shaft. So if you have a hot glue gun and you know, I'll throw some fusible beads in there, that's one. And it does come off clean. 
when, when you peel it off. I mean, you might have to take a couple more of the pieces of hot glue off of it, but it should come off clean. Because what I want you to be able to do is to reuse the motor over and over again in different designs and try different things out. Okay, and one of the things you did is it, you, those contacts I showed you. Okay, I don't know if you can see it very well. So one wire goes through one contact and then we bend it over and the other wire goes into the other contact and you bend it over. Okay. And it's going to start going, except I take out one of the batteries. So when I'm ready to go, I, I kind of leave it loosely in here. Okay. So I'll leave it loosely in here and then I'll just shove it in and that to start it going. Okay. Let me see. It's going around. Where is it? It's the other side. All right. So it's kind of moving. It's moving the wheel. So that way, at least I'm, I'm not, I can control it a little bit. Now in another set later on this summer, you will get a switch, which then you can be able to hook the whole thing on up and then just flip the switch and then it'll start sending power through. But first I want you to learn a little bit about the design or, or how, how you want to make your own um, car bot or motor. And so I gave you a lot of parts and pieces and I'm trying to give you a lot, a lot of information all at the same time. <clears throat> so you're going to get a lot of things in the kit. You're going to get basic building blocks like, you know, popsicle sticks and, um, paper clips. That's how we built the bug bot was the paper clips, but they also hold things together like rubber bands as well. And so you're going to get pieces and parts and you're going to get a card that explains simple machines and how to build things. Um, or how to make uh, simple machines and compound machines. And then you're going to play with it. You're going to try it. You basically, you're going to want a platform. You've got a motor, you've got a mount. One of them, I, as you can see with this one here, I didn't want to use the mount. Um, bringing it up higher, wanted it to tilt. Um, so I didn't, I just set it down on here on the cardboard. And you're going to get some electrical tape and it's wound around a pencil okay and one of the reasons that I'd, I'd rather you didn't try to use hot melt glue right off of the bat um, for putting things together because you when you find out that it didn't work and you needed to adjust something it's a lot easier to adjust when you can take the thing back apart um, if you didn't like the design at all and you want to start over again here you got to try and scrape your your motor off of this or the motor mount so a lot of these I've ended up just taping them down to the uh, cardboard or to the boards. Um, and on one of them, uh, we had uh, used the double face tape to put the, the motor mount down. And then when I decided I didn't like the design, I had to start over, I had to cut the double face tape off. And that was really irritating. So this is when I said, you know, like, try not to make it permanent until you get a design that actually works um, and try different things out. So. Um, like I said, I had some design ideas I showed you and what we're really going to work with here is, is you, yeah, there's lots of videos you can find on, t on, on the, the uh, internet. In our library, we have CarBot and it shows you how to build it with, you know, stuff you have at home. Well, after you already have a motor, um, they've got a racing bot, a motorcycle bot, and, uh, I'm just going to. And it gives you different ideas. This is if you were using the hot milk is that you can make your own pulley system to run the rubber or the rubber bands you know which is what they're showing you over here and you can do that um the hot melt I mean, you can use regular glue too that takes a little more time but you can think about these kind of engineering things it, and and i didn't put the grooved pulley on the wheel i was trying to just let's just, just put it on the axle and see how that works and it didn't work great it kept wanting to flip off or to it stop in the middle of it um, they've got a scribble bot, an inchworm bot, and of course, this is the bug bot, which it's not exactly what they did um, or what I did, but we used it as an as an idea, and I truly, absolutely love it. It was the okay. Um, so other things that they're going to show you. So th this is the one where you're you're basically using. I'm sorry, basically using caps, um, lids, uh, lids. <laughs> They come off of different things but i also want to show you is this the the basic platform and see these straws they've got okay you're going to get a straw in the kit and and i'm gonna i'm going to show you that all right so like on this one oops i'm sorry you're going to get a straw 
All right. So yeah, I have the wheel and the axle, and that's that metal. But see, if you, if you attach the metal rod to the platform, it's not going to go around. So you have the straw so that it, it runs free. Um, you could also you could take those fusible beads and hot melt them to something and then run through that. You can use a plastic straw you have at home. But basically you need something where the the axle can and can spin and yet still be attached to the car. So these are little engineering things that you'll find. Um, and these books that we have here will explain a lot of those sort of um, practices of how to put something together. And you'll get that, uh, you can get that on the internet as well. Um, to show you some, a few other books we've talked about, the collection of books that we have in the teen room for the STEM club. Um, Wire It is one of them. You know, little ideas that they have in there that explain to you how to make your own battery using coins. So uh, this one here, it's going to show you how to, how to do that. And um, this one's called Race It. And they all have, they have all kinds of different um, ideas and stuff in them. But you know, this one shows you how to make a... Um, a wheel and axle out of a uh, out of uh, some C CDs, um, but this also shows you how you can do work. Now, the, what they're doing is they've got this rubber band um, and a pencil, and they're winding it around. And and one of the things that you um, understand about simple machines also uh, one of the things that I worked on in there is I'm trying to find another rubber band <laughs> is. There's a difference between um, kinetic energy, which is the energy of movement. So that when the bot's going, it's 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 you can see the energy going. It's kinetic energy. There's also something called potential energy. And so when you stretch a rubber band or you wind a rubber band, um, and you know when you let it go, oh wait a minute, okay. So it'll hit something with a force. So that potential energy um, is you know like when you've stretched the rubber band, it has a potential for some force. And when you release it, it does that. And, and I'll give you an example of, you know, if you bike up a hill and you're, you're putting a lot of energy into getting up that hill at the top of the hill where you're not going anywhere, that's your potential. And as you glide down the hill on the other side, you're releasing all that energy you put in on the way up. So part of this, uh, kind of getting an understanding um, of, of different ways that you can make things work for you. you don't always have to use battery sometimes you can wind something up and then let it go and and wristwatches used to work that way so here uh, this shows you how to use a, um, a pulley system to create a zip line for your teddy bear not for a real person basically you're you're only going to be able to get enough um, weight <laughs> enough out of this to to create a a weight for a, a, a smaller um, stuffed animal or something. Um, so anyway, different ideas that you can you can utilize um, to do these things. Now I also wanted to um, show you a couple of items that, that we, we did talk about um, before which is things that you can get from our uh, with the adult stem card. We have a couple of the games and one was Circuit Maze. Okay. And so when, when we're talking about this, we're, we're talking about with, with using batteries and, and motors, having things in a series or a parallel circuit and, and, and using LEDs to light things up. Um, so learning about a parallel circuit or a series circuit or something like that, what, what does that all mean? And when you use resistors, what does that mean? Okay, so these games actually teach a little bit about um, that sort of um, electronic engineering. Um, the other one is the snap circuits, and this one may be a little more so because what you get with the snap circuits, um, I know I've shown you this before, but this is a whole big kit, okay, that you're going to get. And you can take that out. Um, for a week and then and you can play with it at home and so it has some very just it's kind of like legos in, in the sense that it's, it has these instructions with um, a layout that's very simple color coded it's got the r1s and r2 so you know which spot to use and they snap together okay but one of the things that they also that comes with this kit and this is inside the kit is a teacher's guide and a student's guide okay 
And in these, they have a lot more information in terms of understanding a series circuit or a parallel circuit, how to construct it, um, different ways that you can put a circuit together and, make, and, and have it still work. Um, and yet, then if you had reversed a few things, it's not going to work and why that is. So they have these guides in here. So if you wanted to learn a little more about that, um, you can do so. Um, one of the things I didn't mention when I, when I told you that the, the motors all came with ratings and, okay, so some of the motors, um, and a lot of hobby motors, that's, these are, these are DC hobby motors. DC stands for direct current, which is what you're getting out of a battery. Um, your plug at home, your outlet that you plug things into that, that gives you alternating current. Um, but a lot of the hobby motors are rated from 1.5 volt to 3 volts. If you stick a 9 volt on it when it's only rated for 3, you're going to burn the motor up. Okay? And I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's going to flat out fail because um, it wasn't rated to take that much energy into it um, or that much force. Um, so it's going to break up. Um, but I did tell you that like with the with this one here, I actually could use a smaller voltage. Obviously the motor is not working at its potential. Um, but it did work out for me um, when I needed something a little lower rated. Um, and possibly what I should have gotten was a smaller motor. But this is what I had. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you have a lot of fun with this. If you'd like to take out the circuit maze or um, the snap circuits or something, come on in and, and you can uh, meet with me or Barb and, and we can get you hooked up with that so you can learn a little more about the engineering of this. This would have originally been uh, designed as a program where everybody came in and all the stuff's laying around on the table and everybody just tries, you know, gluing things together and how could we put something together. So the, the kit has been designed to create that same sort of facilitated um, program at home. You get all of these items and then you kind of figure out how do I want to put this together. So I've tried to give you a few examples here in the, in the video um, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> if you do have some questions um, and you want, or like I said, you can take out some of these books. You can probably look at some videos. You can, you can give me a call. Um, and I'm going to give you one more look at the um, bug bot because I know you're going to want to make one of these. Anyway, those are your paper clips. If you can understand that they've just been unwrapped. <laughs> it's on two jumbo popsicle sticks. And uh, the motor, this one um, particularly, I did put the motor on the mount. Okay, so this motor comes right out of the mount. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this okay eraser off and you can see which I'm thinking well, I wonder if you could probably do it with a gummy bear um but I haven't tried that because it didn't have a gummy bear and so there's the motor and then it slips right in and out of the mount so it's it's not um solid in it so and, and as I said from the other one you didn't have to use the mount and um, so, yeah, you can try different things. And, yeah, you're going to get some googly eyes so that you can dress up different things. Okay. So that's that's where we are. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Seriously, don't get upset when they don't work out or when it, it runs for, like, two, you know, three feet and then it just quits. Because I did the same thing. The rubber band kept falling off. That was my... I really wanted the rubber band one to work. I might have to do the one of the ones where I, where I try out the, um, making my own pulley system so that it actually runs on something. It's not going to, you know, fly off. Um, and I really want to redo this one with the wings. I'm going to get that over here so that you can, because I, I want to get them a little more, um, a little more looking like a plane or something. I don't know. I just thought that was pretty, really pretty cool. Uh, and then I want to try some different colors and stuff. And like I said, I, you can put different kinds of the duct tape on it. Um, the different, I know the camo would make a Jeep. We're going to, that'd be kind of cool. Um, and, and I might actually make a larger platform and maybe even try the, the three or the four pack to see if it, that fan will make it go faster again. Um, I was really surprised at how well that did. Um, 
but yeah, they may run for a little bit and then they just don't want to run anymore, especially when you, you know, you're, you're holding it down with electrical tape. Um, and that's some of the problem that was happening as it's running. It, it the electrical tape's getting a little more loose and then all of a sudden the motor's bending over a little bit and you know, the propell propeller is hitting the ground again and stopping the vehicle. Um, so you kind of, you have to learn by doing and then you see how to solve the problem uh, by doing it a little differently. I'm going to, I'm going to mount it a little better or I'm going to lift it up a little more. Um, sometimes my rubber band just, um, it got stretched out too much from being on it too many times and I had to go get a fresh rubber band so that it was a little springier <laughs> and would actually turn the wheel instead of just flopping around. Um, so yeah, you have to try different things and, and that's, that's how you're going to learn. I didn't know how to make, actually, I put this one together in like five minutes. Okay. And I did that because I had already gone through redesigning and, and fixing the other ones over and over again. It was like, hey, you know, why don't I just try this? And I threw it together really quickly because of all the mistakes I made previously. I knew how to avoid them. All right. So anyway, have a lot of fun. If you want to come in and, 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 and you know, give us a call or something to talk about or grab some of these books. Uh, please feel free to do so. Remember, we got summer reading going on as well. Um, and uh, we've got some crafts and things of that nature. So, yeah, definitely come on in and do something. That I think really would love to do. A, maybe if we get a few people that really want to do a, one of these programs hands on inside the library, we could probably get something like that together. All right. So until next time, um, enjoy. Thanks. Bye.